God is with us, and He has opened arms. He will never fail us. He will never fail us. And God is with us, and He will go before. He will never leave us. He will never leave us. Lift it up. Defeated the grave, raised to life. Our God is able in His name. We overcome before the Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain, he was still white as snow. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain, he walks still white as snow. Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, all to him my Lord. Sin has left the crimson state. He washed it white as snow. And oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life. Just 
Jesus. Four of the most important words in the history of mankind. Jesus paid it all. He paid for all our sin. He just didn't pay 20%, 50%, 90%. And then we have to work like Billy O to make up the rest. It wasn't, well, you put in a pound and I put in a pound. No, Jesus paid it all. The song goes on to say, when that day comes, we will stand before him, not fearful, but we will stand before him complete because we're in him. Scripture tells us we are complete in him. If we know him, if we're in him, if he's in us, we have nothing to fear. When we stand before him, we will be complete in him. Let's take that understanding and make that part of our everyday lives. Because if we are complete in him, we will stop doing some of the stuff that we tend to do. We will stop carrying some of the guilt that we tend to carry. We will stop doing some of the, the works that we do with the wrong motivation. Nothing wrong with doing works of faith. But sometimes we do stuff that's as much superstition and religion as it is Christianity. Jesus paid it all. that sink into your spirit this morning wherever you are, if you're by the kitchen table on the settee if you're in bed this morning let that resonate within your being, Jesus paid it all I'm complete in him oh we thank you Jesus for your sacrifice for each one of us on the cross help us to live up to that in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning. Thank you for Alan team. Um, you may be joined us just since we've started. You're very, very welcome. Thank you for being with us. Remember to share uh, the fact that we're online this morning. Keep your comments coming. Keep them related to what we're doing this morning about the not what new TV you're going to buy tomorrow because the shops are open again or whenever they open. Oh, maybe that's just me, is it? Uh, anyway, let's keep those comments to ourselves. Let let's keep it all about church. And so, a few announcements. Uh, Sunday School Show is on the system. If you want to set that up for your kids this morning or watch it later, uh, I just am loving this Sunday School Show. It's just it's interesting to see every week Wiley picks someone to take off, if we can use that terminology, so today's was really good, so we're all threatened here, because it looks as if Wiley's on a big takeover to take over the run of the church, so looking forward to see who it's going to be next week. Anyway, Sunday School's show is on. Then this Tuesday evening at uh, 7.30, we have our final chapter in the Bible study we've been doing on evangelism, and so most of you have the notes for that, and I think if you need notes, just drop me an email at uh, info at lismancitychurch.com. Uh, that'll be our final session in that particular group, uh, that series. But just a heads up for the following Tuesday, uh, we are going to be doing a prayer and praise evening. And so the team have been practicing for that. We're trying to upgrade our systems. Uh, we've had uh, Lewis and Chad in helping us to take things to a new level electronically and over the airwaves. And so hopefully by then, if they're as good as they say they are, we'll have a super duper wonderful 
extraordinary extraterrestrial system that will be do, that will do everything uh, that we want it to do, hopefully. And so that's great. We thank them for their hard work this week and their continuing hard work. These guys are just tacky geniuses. Uh, I'll not use the word nerds because that would be rude, but they are brilliant. Uh, you just Every church needs people like that, so thank you guys. So that's Tuesday night, the following Tuesday night. We'll tell you more about that next week. And also then Thursday, we gather for prayer online as well. So it's been great to see uh, so many regularly joining us for that. So Austin usually sends out the links for those two uh, meetings. So just watch your, your email, your inbox, and, and watch your junk in case they've been diverted in there. So those are most of the announcements. We're going to continue with uh, another song just before I bring the word. Again, thank you for your giving. Uh, it's been great just to see how everyone has stepped up and uh, either given online or made a point of being able to get their tithe to us. And so we do really appreciate that. And we thank you for that. And so keep up the good work there. And so as we worship, let's just thank God for his blessing, for his hand upon our lives and blessing us financially. And uh, the fact that we live in a country where we seek at least to make sure nobody falls through the net. And um, we've been busy here again this week. I think another 400 parcels went out. There are many people around the world who don't have food. They don't have a government, don't have systems to support them. So let's be mindful of that. Let's be thankful that we live in, in that setting and pray for those around the world who don't have that, that God will intervene and that the people of God will step up where there's opportunity there. So we thank God for his blessing. Thanks, guys.
Father, we wait for you. Oh Lord, in these days when there's been lockdown, we've had more opportunity to wait for you. And we pray that as we come out of this time that we will have learned the benefits of spending more time with you, of listening to your voice, to wait for you. Lord, so often in the past we've run ahead and made decisions and made choices and ask you to bless them. Lord, may we be people who wait for you, do what you tell us to do, and then we'll be assured that your blessing's upon us. So, Father, we thank you for this worship this morning. We thank you for this worship team. We pray that you will continue to bless them. Lord, even as they prepare their hearts to lead us into the prayer and praise night, Father, we just pray that that will be a significant night for each one of us. We've never done it this way before, but we just pray, Lord, that will impact us. And Lord, that the result of our worship and prayers will impact our city, impact our families, impact our nations. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. If you have a little clap emoji, you can put it on there. Uh, these guys are amazing. We just... Uh, we were in doing some stuff the other night. Well, I wasn't actually doing anything. I was just watching our geniuses do all their stuff. But it was quite amazing just to watch the team and listen to the team and just to see the, the heart for worship. And just, it was fun worshiping God to them. It wasn't something that was religious, not something they have to do. It's something they get to do. And that was just awesome. Lindsay said I preached too long last week, which was probably the case. So she's threatened to buy a bigger clock. The clock that we have has no battery in it. So the good news is I brought my own. So just of an hour and a half put on there, and uh, that will keep me within the guidelines. As you know, um, if you've been watching us over the last while, we've been looking at this whole what in the world is happening, the resetting. The world has been reset in a sense uh, as we know it. Things are never going to be the same again. It's one of those new normals. And so then we began to look, well, what should the new normal be for the Christians? And actually, the new normal should be the old normal. Uh, God's trying to get us back to our default. God's trying to reset us and make us into the people that he wants us to be. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle, as we've seen. And we looked at that over the past few weeks. So if you haven't seen that, you can pick that up on our YouTube uh, platform or you can watch it again on Facebook. And so we've been looking at that. Last week we realized that it was uh, it was Pentecost Sunday and we looked at the, the Holy Spirit and the part that the Holy Spirit has to play in our lives as Christians. And I want to develop that theme. As I said last week, many people talk about God. They talk they talk about God as a, a as a vague entity. Some people actually can talk about God as their father. Some people actually struggle with the concept of God as a father because maybe they haven't known their biological father or they've had an abusive father. And uh, Lindsay will tell you she had a father didn't spend enough money on her as a child, made her work. We had chip shops and we had them working in the chip shops from the age of 12. But look how well they turned out. It really was a good idea. And so it wasn't slave labor, but it was just to teach them and train them uh, at, from a young age. And so... 
It doesn't matter what our relationship has been with our father. God is a good father. And so some people can talk about God. Some people can talk about God as a father. Some people can even talk about Jesus. Some people really don't want to talk about Jesus. But many people struggle to understand the person of the Holy Spirit. And we said last week, the Holy Spirit, yes, he's referred to sometimes as wind, as fire, as a dove, but that's not who he is. He's a person. He has characteristics that sometimes you can see that's the effect. But the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. And so today we're going to be looking at the importance of receiving the Holy Spirit and understanding the Holy Spirit's role in our lives. And we'll probably roll this out over a couple of weeks to help us get a better grasp uh, of this. And so as God's representatives on earth, God's man, God's woman, and God's church both needed the breath of his Spirit to be alive and to thrive. And so if we go back to to the beginning of time when God created man, he needed the breath of God before anything happened. The church needed the breath of God before anything happened. So God's people, God's original man, God's church on the earth today, we both need the breath of God. You can be alive, but you can be in a coma. You see, there's a difference between being alive and thriving. You can be alive and surviving, but God wants us to thrive. And we, we look back to Genesis uh, 1. It, it tells us this when God uh, was creating the earth. The earth was formless and void. Emptiness and darkness was upon the face of the ocean that covered the unformed earth. The spirit, the ruach, the wind, the breath, the exhal, the exaltation, uh, the, when God ex- exhaled, His breath. When God said, "Let there be light," you have to. Your breath exhales when you when you speak forth. And so, the spirit, the ruach, the wind, the breath, the exhalation of God was moving, hovering, brooding over the face of the waters. And God said, "As we know, let there be light." And so, even for the earth to take shape, the breath of God was involved. So, earth was a a sea of nothingness. It tells us it was an empty darkness. Uh, It was a non-formed earth, and that breath of God, the Spirit of God, uh, the Ruach, which is the word for spirit here, the wind of God came when God spoke, caused things to happen. And so the earth was formed by the breath of God, by the Spirit of God hovering and moving and, and moving in accordance as God spoke. And then in Genesis 2, we move on to God's man. It says, on the day the eternal God scooped dirt out of the ground, sculpted it into the shape we call human, breathed the breath that gives life into the, the sorry, one day the eternal God scooped dirt out of the ground, sculpted it into the shape we call human, breathed the breath that gives life, life into the nostrils of the human, and the human became a living soul. The Amplified puts it this way, the man became a living being, an individual, complete in body and spirit. And so God scooped up some dirt. So if somebody calls you a piece of dirt, I don't know, don't put your hand up, but if anybody ever, sometimes people get very rude and say, you're a piece of dirt. Not that any of us would ever say that to anybody, but people have been called that in the past. It's actually very scriptural because the Bible tells us God scooped up a piece of dirt, shaped it into a human, and then breathed his breath into that human being. And that human being became a a, a body that was alive with a soul, et cetera, et cetera. We'll see just what this word breath here means. The word breath, when he breathed into mankind, it's the word uh, nashma. Don't know if that's the proper way to say it or not. But it's a vital breath. It's the breath of life. It's divine life. It's divine inspiration. It's intellect. When God breathed breath into this piece of clay, into this piece of dirt, he breathed his life. He breathed divine life. He he breathed intellect into the man. He breathed soul, uh, mind, will, and emotions. He breathed spirit. He actually created a triune being in the image. God is a triune God. He created a man, body, soul, and spirit. And that was the Holy Spirit. That was the wind of God. That was this nashma. Uh, And so... The, the Holy Spirit came, he created the earth with his breath, then God created man 
with his breath. So we see a, a principle here. We see a trait of God here. If we skip forward a few millennia to John 20, we see this is the day of Jesus' resurrection. And it says in the, it, it was evening on that same day, resurrection day, the first day of the week. The disciples were meeting behind barred doors, not just closed doors, barred doors for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace to you. He showed them his hands aside. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with great joy. Jesus said to them, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you as my representatives. When he said this, he <laughs> breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. It's quite interesting. We see the earth. God breathes in the earth. The earth comes to life. God breathes in the man. Uh, man comes to life. Jesus breathes in these disciples. What does the Bible say after Jesus' resurrection? Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren. When Jesus rose again, he was the first of a new breed of people. He was the first of a new creation. And so here are these disciples. They're between the resurrection and they're between the day of Pentecost, which is 50 years later. And, and Jesus comes and he breathes on them and he says, receive you, receive you the Holy Spirit. And this word breathed here is fuel, which is an interesting word. It means to generate, to spring up and to produce. So as Jesus breathed on them, he was stirring up something in them. He was stirring up the word in them. He was stirring up the spirit in them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit, the word there for Holy Spirit is pneuma. So if you need to get your tires and your car blown up, it's, it's a pneuma, it's air, it's a pneumatic force that puts that in there. And so in a sense, to use an everyday term, he was putting air in their tires. And so they had the tires, they were there, they'd listened to him, they understood him a bit, but God said, I'm now going to put some air in your tires now, we're going to go on a journey here. And so the word pneuma means to receive Christ's spirit. It means the Holy Spirit's life and mind. So when Jesus breathed on these first disciples, he was breathing into them not only the Holy Spirit, but everything that comes with that, the Holy, Holy Spirit life and the Holy Spirit's mind, the intellect of the Holy Spirit and understanding. And so in a sense, that was their born again experience. They were between this resurrection Sunday. They were between the church being birthed in all its glory on Pentecost Sunday. And so here they are being breathed on by the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians tells us, therefore, anyone in Christ is a new creation, reborn and renewed. In a sense, that what, what's happening to these new followers, these disciples, renewed by the Holy Spirit. The previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. New things have come. A spiritual awakening brings a new life. So they were spiritually awakened. They became spiritually alive. Now, they still had to wait a few weeks for that day of Pentecost, for that complete empowerment by the Holy Spirit. But this was, again, that trait that we see throughout the scriptures from earth to man to this new creation man uh, and then this development of the church. So this was a foretaste of preparing them for the fullness of the promise of the Father. And Jesus told them about that in Luke 24. As he listened carefully, I'm sending the promise of the Father, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the pneuma upon you. You're, you're to remain in the city of Jerusalem where you'll be clothed and fully equipped with power from on high. We read a couple of these verses last week. But you will receive the power and ability in Acts 1 verse 8. When the Holy Spirit, the pneuma, uh, comes upon you, you'll be my witnesses. And so Jesus earlier has been telling them about the Holy Spirit. He's telling them that I'm leaving you, I'm going away. That was horrendous news. Imagine if you were these young, quite young, many of the disciples were in their teens or early 20s. Imagine you had given up everything. Imagine you had left family and friends, a job, your business, fishing, you followed Jesus. You thought, this is the Messiah. He's the man who's going to come and restore the kingdom to Israel. And then all of a sudden, he says, well, I'm heading off now. What? But, uh, Peter, did, did he just say he's going away somewhere? Hold on. We have given up everything. We have given our lives for this man. 
and he's bogging off. What's going on here? Would you not be like that? We, you know, we're really, we read the scriptures so religiously and think, oh, well, that's nice. You know, Jesus is going away and he's going to send the comforter. No, they're panicking. They're thinking, what on earth or other places is going on here? And so Jesus said, yeah, don't, hey, don't panic. I'm sending another comforter. I'll ask uh, the Father to send you a replacement, in a sense, for me. Or In, in fact, it's not a, it is a replacement, but it's actually the Spirit of Christ that he's sending. And so he will give you another helper, a comforter, an advocate, an intercessor, a counselor, a strengthener, a standby to be with you forever. So Jesus is saying, I can only be in one place at one time. I can only be with you for a season. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he can be with you everywhere at all times. That's good news. And so he goes on to say, this spirit is a spirit of truth who the world cannot receive. So that's important to understand. The world can't receive the Holy Spirit, but we can receive the Holy Spirit. And when we receive, when we ask, we talked about this last week, is it right to say, I ask Jesus into my heart or into my life? Well, actually, you're asking the Spirit of Christ into your life because Jesus is in heaven at the minute, but his Holy Spirit, his Spirit is here. And so the world can't receive him into their heart but it, uh, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because the Holy Spirit remains with you continually and will be within you. And so for some Christians, they really don't know the Holy Spirit. They know about God the Father. They know about Jesus. But I talk to many Christians and they struggle to understand the Holy Spirit as a person, the role of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And so this is why I want to open this up a little bit and help us get an understanding of the role of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, because that will bring us to a new level as Christians. I've told you these things, Jesus goes on to say, while I'm still with you, the helper, the Holy Spirit, he'll come in my name, in my place, to represent me, to act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. He will help you to remember everything I've told you. And so, as we can see, there, there's maybe eight or nine different things here that Jesus refers to uh, about this comforter, this helper, the Holy Spirit. He'll be a helper. He's the spirit of truth. He's not the spirit of lies or the spirit of maneuvering or the spirit of manipulation. He's the spirit of truth. He's an intercessor. He's a comforter. He's a counselor. He's a standby. He's an advocate. Everybody needs a good lawyer, don't they? And so the Holy Spirit is our lawyer. He's also our strengthener. These are amazing attributes, amazing things that the Holy Spirit comes alongside and within us to, to be to us. So it's important that we understand these, isn't it? It's interesting that the, the really the only other place the Bible gives a picture of a helper is back in Genesis. And so in Genesis 2 verse 18, God said he created the man, he blew, blew the breath of God into him, he created the man. And then he said, it's not good or beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, a companion one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. I am so glad that when God looked at Adam, he said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper for him. Because who's going to make the tea? Who's going to look after us? Who's going to wash our clothes? This is real sexist, isn't it? This is, don't write me any letters. I'm just winding you up here and just joking. But imagine what we'd be like, man. Joe, imagine what you'd be like if God hadn't gave you a helper. I can just imagine Joe. He'd be like the wild man of Borneo. He'd be dressed like a hermit. He would have a beard down to his waist. He would be like skin and bones because he doesn't know how to boil the kettle. Well, he maybe can boil the kettle. That's insulting, Joe, isn't it? But you say that yourself. So, man, we needed a helper. And so... As mankind, Jesus knew we needed the helper. He was leaving. He was going to be with the Father, and he knew we were going to be in a hostile world. He knew that we needed a helper. I love the words that the, uh, for the helper back in Genesis, this, this woman that God made uh, for mankind. He said she'd be a companion. 
someone that balances. You see, the Holy Spirit's our companion. Jesus said he'll never leave you or forsake you. He's the paraclete, uh, is, the, is the word in Greek. He's the one who comes alongside. So he's a companion. He balances us. When we're getting off course, when we're beginning to go down a cul-de-sac, he'll balance us. He brings us back in line. He's a counterpart. That's quite an amazing thing. The Bible tells us this, that we are co-laborers with the Holy Spirit. Just as Adam and Eve were co-laborers, we get to co-labor with the Holy Spirit. That's, an, that's mind-blowing. And so he works with us. We work with him to bring God's purposes into place. He's a suitable companion. Of course he is, because he's the very one who's breathed life into us. He's complementary. He doesn't go against our DNA. He doesn't go against who we are because we're actually created in the image of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so again, I, I love the completeness of the scriptures. You know, some people want to jettison the Old Testament and just say, well, the Old Testament's a bit gruesome and hard to understand for people who don't know Jesus. So we'll just detach it like a carriage from a train. No, listen, the Bible is complete from Genesis to Revelation. We see God's patterns, we see his precepts, we see his principles from Genesis right through to Revelation. And this is another one, the helper who comes alongside to minister to man and to minister to mankind. John 16 gives us some of the uh, picture of some of the things that he will do in helping guide us uh, in being the helper. It says he will guide you into all truth. A guide's a wonderful thing. You know, if you go on holiday or you go away somewhere, or if you want to climb Mount Everest or Kilimanjaro, you get, you'll get the Sherpas out. You'll get a guide because they've been there before. You don't start off thinking, oh, I, I fancy climbing Everest. No, you wouldn't even dream of it. You prepare, you get ready, you get a guide, you choose a guide. You maybe go on your holidays, you go on a, a tour for the day. There's a guide to keep you. The guide will show you, tell you, uh, lead you into all truth. You know, you can walk through the streets of Rome and you can miss so much. But if you have a guide with you, the guide can tell you, well, this is what, this is the Parthenon, or no, that, where's that? That's in Greece, is it? Whatever's in Rome. No, this is the Vatican, sure that one. This is the Vatican and this is when it was built and these are the Swiss Guard and this is the Spanish Steps and this is such and such. You could miss a lot of stuff. They'll guide you. They'll take you down maybe a little side street which opens up into a, a wonderful uh, concourse with lots of history. And so the Holy Spirit's going to be our guide into all truth, not just biblical truth. He'll guide you into the truth of how to live in a lockdown. He'll guide you into the truth of how to deal with a pandemic, how to deal with your mental health, how to deal with your children, how to deal with whatever the issue is. He is the one who will guide us into all truth. We just have to ask him. Whatever he hears, he will speak. That's an amazing thing. Whatever he hears, he will speak. You know, let me give you an example of that. We were on a, Mary and I, many years ago, were on a tour of the west coast of the, of the United States. And it was a bus tour. It was like two weeks. And uh, one of the places we visited was the Grand Canyon. It was an amazing, uh, Grand Canyon is amazing if you ever get a chance to go, if we ever get a chance to go anywhere again. Go there. You know, listen, this one thing about this lockdown tells us if you get a chance to do something, do it when you've got the chance. And so I'm going to spend all the kids' inheritance traveling the world if I'm allowed to travel the world and do buy the biggest TVs and all the gadgets that I never get a chance to buy and give some money to the queen, of course. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. The Holy Spirit's bringing me back in balance. But anyway, we're on this trip. And so we were at the Grand Canyon. There was a guide in the trip. She was very, very helpful, but she wasn't the Holy Spirit because she did give us advice, but it was interesting advice. And she said, you know, when you get off, don't go too close to the edge or you'll fall down. And that's you over and done with. But she said, in the shops, you'll see this most beautiful uh, jewelry. It's the brightest blue. You really don't get it anywhere else. It's made by the Indian tribes in this area here. It is absolutely stunning. And she said, I always advise people to buy this jewelry because you're not going to see it anywhere else. So we went into the shop 
and we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Whatever he hears, he'll speak. I felt the Holy Spirit saying to me, speaking into my heart, don't buy the jewelry. That's all I heard. Don't buy the jewelry. There's something wrong with it. So I said to Mary, look, I know you think I'm going to be a cheapskate by saying this, and I'm just using God as an excuse not to spend money. But there's something wrong with this jewelry. It is beautiful. It's amazing. We've never seen anything like it. But if it's okay with you, we're not going to buy it. You can buy anything else. I think I said that, or maybe that was just in your imagination. I don't actually know if I said that out loud. But I said, you can buy anything else, but we're just not going to buy this. So Mary said, no, that's okay. If that's what you feel, I'm happy to go with that. So we got back in the bus, and the guide said, well, what did you think? Of it? Oh, fantastic, Grand Canyon's great. Did anybody buy the jewelry? Everybody on the bus except the Agnews, held their jewelry up or held their little bag up that they bought the jewelry. Says, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it's beautiful. So there's something really interesting about the, the jewelry. So if you look very closely and says, we can't always see this with the, the naked eye. Every piece of jewelry has a pinhole in it. And she said, the, the tribe that creates it, they put a pinhole in it and then they invoke a demon to come and live in the jewelry. Mary looked at me as if to say, I've married the most perfect man of God on the face of God's planet. And I felt good. I could actually felt the hair sitting up in the back of my neck because I thought that is on. I actually did hear God there. I wasn't just being a cheap skate. But he will speak what he hears. And sometimes God speaks into our hearts and we ignore it because we put under peer pressure or wife pressure or husband pressure or world pressure or that's the end thing. Sometimes we need to just listen to that still small voice. Sometimes we, al- we need to allow him to speak because it will stop us from getting into trouble. Now, I'm not a superstitious person, but I don't want my wife wearing a piece of jewelry that somebody has invoked a demon to live in. I don't know about you, but that's not our choice. It's not our option. He will not speak on his own authority, but he will declare to you the things that are to come. And so the Holy Spirit is continually speaking into our lives, warning of us of stuff, preparing us for stuff. So many times we have noticed here we've been doing stuff. We've made, Let's look at this pandemic. Eight years ago, God spoke to me about starting a food bank, about reaching into community. Now is the time that that food bank, that all the stuff we do here is is reaching a zenith that we never thought it was going to reach. We did not know that we would be the people in Lisburn settled and prepared and trusted and established to be a stakeholder in our city, not just a church with a ministry, but a, a, a voice into the nation practically and physically across so many stakeholder voices, not just to do with food, but in so many areas. And so he will declare things to come. We may not fully understand them, but we need to move on them. We need to act on them. And we may never see the benefit of it until we get into eternity. But many times we will see it. Maybe one year, it may be six months, it may be 10 years down the road. But he will be showing us things to come. And we need to then be walking into those things. He'll guide us into all truth. John 15, 26 to 27 says this, but when the helper comes, that is the spirit of truth who comes from the Father and whom I myself will send to you from the Father, he will speak plainly about me. The Holy Spirit's going, you ever meet these complicated Christians? You ever meet these flaky Christians? You think, what, an, is that person smoking dope? Are they really a Christian or are they just a dope? They're smoking dope or they are a dope. But what they tell you is nothing to do with what Jesus said or what the Bible says or what the Holy Spirit. Oh, I had this dream. I'm not against dreams. The Holy Spirit told me this. You think, hold on. That's, there's nothing plain about that or there's nothing Jesus about that. The Holy Spirit will speak plainly about Jesus. Listen, this Christian life is so simple. Jesus came. He was born in a, a manger. He lived a life, he gave his life, he died on the cross, he rose again. He said, if you'll repent and accept me as Lord, if you'll you'll make me Lord of your life, I'll send my Holy Spirit, I'll come and live in you. 
I walk with you. I lead you. I'll give you a purpose in life. I'm going to take you to heaven at the end of the day or a new heaven and a new earth, however you want to look at it. All you need to do is follow me, take up your cross daily, read the Bible, and listen to the Holy Spirit and love people. It's pretty simple. It's not rocket solid, but some people love to make it so complicated. Uh, And so the Holy Spirit always speaks plainly of Jesus. He always makes Christianity as simple as possible, not as complicated as possible. So if you're getting complicated, it's not the Holy Spirit. So just back out of that cul-de-sac and say to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me to simplify this. Romans 8, 26 to 27 says this, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weaknesses. So the Holy Spirit, when we're weak, when we're going through a season where we just think, I, I can't make it. This pandemic is doing my head in. This illness is doing my head in. This circumstances doing my head in. I just, I'm too weak to go another step another day. The Holy Spirit comes and he empowers us. What an awesome thing. He will empower us in our weakness. So we're thinking we have to be all strong and do it all in ourselves, and then the Holy Spirit will come. No, when we're weak, he comes and empowers us in our weakness. For example, it says at times we don't even know how to pray or how the best thing Uh, or know the best things to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up. There's that germination. There's that when Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit, there was a springing up, there was a rising up, there was a stirring up. The Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede, not just to intercede. We'll talk more about that over the next little while. To super intercede on our behalf. And so when we're weak, when we're not sure, but we lean into God, we lean into the Holy Spirit. He will even pray on our behalf when we don't know what to pray. What, what an amazing helper. He also gives us gifts so that we can serve the body of Christ and serve in the world that we're in. So he comes along and he gives us gifts. It says there are different kinds of gifts, but they are given to the believers by the same Spirit. They are given. Uh, there are different ways to serve. But they all come from the same Lord. There are different ways the Spirit works. The Holy Spirit, the pneuma, is given to each one of us in a special way for the good of all. So he comes. He comes upon us. We talked about this last week, the day of Pentecost. He gifts us. He gives us gifts for different situations. For di- he gives us different abilities. But they're not to make us look good. As it says here, he gives us these abilities and these gifts so that we can serve, so that we can work for him, so that we can bless our community, bless our family, bless our church, bless our nation. So he comes, and and so the Bible tells us we should seek earnestly the best gift. So if you're not sure what your gifts are, uh, ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, show me. Maybe ask a friend. You'll have to Zoom them. But ask a friend, but find out, see what, what is it you like doing? What is it you're good at? What, how has the Holy Spirit gifted you? And then how can you take that gift and serve in community? But the fruit of the Spirit, he also gives us fruit. So gifts are given, but fruit is grown. Sometimes we try to get the Holy Spirit to give us fruit as a gift. But the fruit of the Spirit is not a gift. It's something we grow. Gift is something we get. There's no charge. There's no way you can work for it. The Holy Spirit gives it to us. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work of his presence within us, accomplishes love, joy, peace, patience, etc., etc. These are the, the fruit of the Spirit that grow when we're walking with him, when he's our helper, when we're journeying with him, when we're in his presence. See, if we're not in his presence, if we're doing our own thing, these fruit will not be evident, they'll not be growing the way they should. I'm going to ask the team to come just as I'm finishing. John 14, verse 26 says this, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you talked about this last week. He'll teach us all things. When Father's going to do his driving test, we're hoping the Holy Spirit is going to teach him 
all things and remember the questions and not run over anybody when he's doing his test. And then we're going to have him drive in our van. And uh, so he teaches all things. And he'll bring to our remembrance everything that Jesus said. You know, if you don't read it, he can't bring it to remembrance. Yes, he can inspire us. Yes, he can drop a principle into our hearts. Yes, he can tell us things prophetically. But if you haven't studied something, if you haven't read something, it can't be brought to your remembrance. And so this is why it's so important to be in church. It's so important to be online. It's so important to be in the Bible study. It's so important to be in whatever environment that you're learning the scriptures. It's so important to have those apps on your phone, to have your Bible, mark your Bible. Somebody was telling me during the week that they didn't realize you were allowed to mark their Bible, and now they have been marking their Bible, but their concern is they're going to run out of space. I said, write a little bit smaller. Well, let's buy another Bible. It's the same. It's not a great problem that you are going to run out of space in your Bible because you're writing what God sent to you, what the Holy Spirit sent to you. That blows me away. That is fantastic. And so he'll bring these things to our remembrance. We need to be studying the word. We need to be seeing, listen, the word from Genesis to Revelation. There's principles, there's precepts, there's things that we can understand that apply to life situations that there's not a direct answer in the Bible for. This is how the Holy Te Spirit can teach us all things. There are things that there's not a direct answer for, but there's a principle for. And so we need to remember that. We need to remember that the Holy Spirit is with us, that he's in us, that he's upon us to bless our lives, to bless our families, to bless our city, to bless our nation, to help us fulfill the calling and purpose of God in our lives. Amen. According to my stopwatch, I have a minute left. I'm just going to give it away. I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to hand over to Val. Thanks, Val. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, Let's worship His holy.
draws me My time has come Still my soul will sing your praise Unending Ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord Lord Jesus, we thank you that you promised that you would send another comforter, a helper. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you came to walk alongside us, to comfort us, to guide us, to lead us into all truth, to empower us, to fill us, to overflow us to put that air into our tires, that pneuma. And so Holy Spirit, today, wherever anyone is watching, just come afresh. Just clothe them and par them from on high. Just let them know that you're the one who's alongside to be the helper, even when they're feeling weak. Maybe today they're feeling at the lowest point of their life. Holy Spirit, come and power them. Be a super intercessor. Be the one who brings your comfort and your peace. In Jesus' name. The Bible also tells us that part of the Holy Spirit's role in the world is to convict men of sin and to convince them of Jesus as their Savior. Maybe today you're watching and you don't know Jesus. Maybe the Holy Spirit has been working in your heart this morning. You maybe just need to come and say, Lord Jesus, I repent. I know the Holy Spirit is convicting me of my sin. I know he's convincing me that you're the Savior. I give my life. I hand my life over to you. Become my Savior and become my Lord. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. You know, if you've prayed that prayer, you pray that prayer today, let us know. Send us a little note at info at lisburncitychurch.com. If you know us locally, you know where we are. That would so encourage us. We know in these days the Holy Spirit is working in many, many lives. This pandemic is causing people to think of their mortality and think about what life is really all about. Thank you for joining with us today. We will see many of you during the week online and uh, it's been a blessing just to be able to share God's word with you today and we so look forward to the day that we all can get together again and see each other face to face. So be blessed, have a a good week, have a safe week and uh, don't be rushing to those stores that are opening this week too quick and spending all your money save some for God in Jesus name Amen